What I'm about to tell you is a true story of a man who was leveraged over 2 million to 1 for one day. Last month, the SEC charged a 23-year-old fast food worker from North Carolina with fraud because he was able to fool his broker into giving him $200,000 even though he only had 9 cents in his bank account. And he used that money to buy meme stocks and actually made just over $7,000 in profit before his broker caught on to the fraud and kept his profits for themselves. I'm going to walk you through this case study of things you shouldn't do when investing, especially the fraud part. Hey everyone, my name is Preet Banerjee and I'm a consultant to the wealth management industry and former stockbroker. And this channel is for anyone who wants to learn more about investing and the world of money around us. Okay, let's set the stage. Deontay Jatori Anthony of North Carolina was working at a pretzel shop, Auntie Anne's, great pretzels, on a part-time basis and not making a lot of money. According to the SEC, examining his bank accounts revealed that he was earning about $400 per month on average, which works out to less than $5,000 per year. However, he applied for a brokerage account on July 1st, 2022 via an online application and falsely claimed that his annual income was between $25,000 and $50,000 per year. And once his brokerage account was open, Mr. Anthony initiated transfers from his bank account to his brokerage totaling $1 million. There was a big problem with this in that his bank account only had nine cents in it. So why did he do this? Well, his broker allowed for instant deposits, which is where they give you credit for a portion of your incoming deposit that you say is coming. It's a feature designed to help people start trading right away when they open up an account. And normally what happens is that if your broker provides immediate access to say, 20% of the transfer that you've initiated, then what happens is you link your bank account to your brokerage and on the brokerage platform, you say, transfer $10,000 from my bank account to this brokerage. It can take a few days for the $10,000 to arrive, but the broker says, hey, we'll make $2,000 available right now, 20% in this example, so you can get started trading. And so it's like a super short-term loan for only a few days because within a few days, the $10,000 shows up because most people don't initiate transfers for money they don't have. In this case, the broker had a very liberal immediate access credit policy. They would give you 20% of up to $1 million in pledged deposits and so that's what Mr. Anthony did. He set up transfers for $1 million in total. And the brokerage said, cool, here's 200 grand to start trading right now while we wait for the money to come. Wasting no time, our man used $199,956.65 to buy a very undiversified portfolio, including meme stocks. His largest positions included almost $85,000 in Apple, just over $78,000 in GameStop, to the moon, baby, over $22,000 in NVIDIA, and over $12,000 in AMC. However, the very next day, the brokerage figured out that something was indeed awry. They proceeded to immediately liquidate all of the holdings, and as luck would have it, the net profit was actually $7,127.25. And the brokerage kept those profits for themselves. Now, in a sense, Mr. Anthony's fraud actually worked out for the brokerage, but trust me, they would be especially angry if the positions ended up losing money. Now, just for fun, if we calculate the leveraged return on investment based on turning over $7,000 in profit off of only nine cents, that would have been a return of almost 8 million percent in one day. Warren Buffett, eat your heart out. Of course, those numbers don't mean anything because it was all fraudulent. Mr. Anthony never had $1 million. He just initiated a transfer for that amount, likely in the hopes that he could get the instant access of $200,000, maybe make some trades, hopefully make a profit, and then take the money out before anyone noticed. Except people did notice right away. I mean, the brokerage figured it out in less than 24 hours. And as a result, the SEC filed a complaint against Mr. Anthony in court, and he is accused of a $1 million free writing scheme in addition to making untrue statements for the purposes of fraud. Specifically, he is charged with violating Section 10B of the Exchange Act and Rule 10B-5. According to the law firm Brown, Neri, Smith & Kahn, SEC Rule 10b-5 states that it is illegal for any person to 
defraud or deceive someone, including through the misrepresentation of material information with respect to the sale or purchase of a security. The case looks like a slam dunk against Mr. Anthony, but I have some questions. The first question is for the brokerage. Now, of course, Mr. Anthony's alleged actions are fraudulent. But while Mr. Anthony's actual income was about $400 per month, how did a brokerage authorize $200,000 in instant credit to a 23-year-old who applied for an account with a falsely reported income between $25,000 and $50,000? Still not really that high. It's not mentioned in the complaint whether he also reported inflated assets held elsewhere, but I think the brokerage should should, at the very least, examine whether it makes sense to give someone instant access for up to $200,000 when they're brand new to the broker, young, and show a relatively low income. Question two, to what degree will this scheme attempt to be copycatted in the future? To a certain extent, this stuff happens from time to time, but this copycatting is a real concern, as according to the SEC, Mr. Anthony says he thought of his scheme as a joke and never really considered it fraud. I mean, who knows if he's just saying that, but it's the stuff of legends for some of the people on the Wall Street Bets community on Reddit. And with more and more people adopting conspiratorial views of the world, coupled with the celebrity of fraud through the legs of people like Elizabeth Holmes, Martin Shkreli, and Frank Abagnale from Catch Me If You Can, it turns out more and more people are coming to view fraud perpetrated by the little guy against faceless corporations as almost acceptable. Is this some type of new recreational fraud, or maybe it's just casual white-collar fraud? I kind of understand why people feel that way, but here's your reminder. Similar to the January 6th, 2021 United States Capitol attack, rioters are learning that there are real consequences for breaking the rules, no matter how you feel about them. Hopefully it goes without saying, but just in case, don't commit securities fraud. It's an unwritten rule that if you make it to the end of a video, you have to click the like button. If you didn't make it this far, it's okay. You don't have to. Don't forget to also subscribe to my channel, and I will see you in the next video. Money good. Throw up where I'm from. Let them know I'm still hood. I ain't had to get nobody hit, but I could. Before I post a picture, I text, yeah, I should. I ain't got a word about